Welcome back to 33 year old Boomer ranting in the snow. You shouldn't be an expert. Let's talk about it. You see, when I was a wee lad, my grandfather asked me, what's your thing? What's your specialization? Because in his time, having been born in the 40s, you had to have a thing, you had to have a specialization. And then that would feed you and your family and it'll allow you to buy a house for very little. My grandfather, who's still alive, he's 86, uh, he was an engineer. He graduated up of his class at university in uh, Romania land. And uh, he did very well for himself. And of course, like any responsible grandfather, he wanted to make sure that his grandson would also be an expert in something. Being completely unaware of the fact that the world was about to change forever. You see, I'm not quite sure that being an expert is still a good idea in the, in the current year. Can you see how well, how nicely it's snowing? It's very nice. You see, you could become an expert in React. And because of the cycle of technology now, that skill, even though it could have fed your family for years, that skill will eventually become obsolete. And the expertise that you have in React will eventually no longer really be that relevant. It will, you know, if you apply to a job once React is no longer popular and you say that you know React, it's kind of like saying that you can juggle bowling balls. It's interesting, but it doesn't really do anything, does it? Now, the question is, to what degree of abstraction do you have to go now? Because, of course... React is a very specific example. And you could maybe say the same one layer up. So one layer up from React, you could say it would be JavaScript. Should you be a JavaScript engineer? I don't know. You can go one level higher. Should you be a web dev? You can go one level higher. Should you be a software developer? And the answer is that I don't know, and I don't think anyone does. What I do think you should do is develop your intelligence. Develop your ability to recognize passions, to be creative, and to solve problems. Because that is the ultimate backbone on which everything else is founded. It doesn't matter if React gets automated or it goes out of vogue. <coughs> it doesn't matter if web dev becomes automated or they just need fewer people. It doesn't matter if that happens to programming in general. What you should do is you should practice the fundamentals. You should practice the fundamentals of if I encounter a problem, how quickly can I solve it? If someone presents me with a problem, how long between me learning about the problem and me fixing the problem? You know, do I have the discipline required to read the, the documentation or to do the research? Once you start thinking in more general terms like that, it very quickly becomes obvious what you should or shouldn't train, what you should or shouldn't practice or study. Because people will always go, you know, what's the, what language should I learn in 2026 to become a developer or to make six figs? And the reality is that no one knows. Well, the people that do know, they're not gonna tell you because they're making too much money. What they might do is sell you a course about it once, once the jig is up, once there's no more money left in, the, in that meme. They might do that. 
And so if you want to figure out what skills you should learn, you should do this thought experiment. You should stop for a second. It's very windy. I hope the audio is not completely fried. Probably is. Should I just do this? There you go. Is that better? Is that preventing the... <laughs> what you should do is you should think, okay, if React got automated tomorrow, if JavaScript got automated tomorrow, what would I need to do? Or what kind of skills would I need in order for that to just not, just not matter? And once you do this, the answers become simple, right? If you think, okay, at its fundamental level, what is the purpose of being a software developer? Well, the purpose of being a software developer is to solve problems. Okay, how do you solve a problem? Well, you need to be able to have, well, you should have a bunch of context in your mind. You should be able to keep a bunch of problems in your head at once. Okay, so, so problem solving and context management. Okay, cool. What else? Well, you have to be creative so that you can take a bunch of ideas in your head and assemble them in a useful way. Okay, so creativity, got it. And then you have to be able to take these steps, these Lego pieces, and combine them in a, in a way that creates a functional system which solves the problem. Okay, so algorithmic thinking. So I need to be able to, to think on a problem in steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on. These are fundamentally the tools that you actually need. Everything else is just a meme. If you need to learn React, you can do so in an afternoon. If you need to learn some new programming language, you can learn it over the weekend. You don't need years to learn something new, at least not to a functional degree. And this is where the problem of being an expert also comes up because people often tend to go a bit too deep down rabbit holes. They have this sense of like, oh, I don't know enough about this, I don't know enough about that. And that's fine. You should be curious. You should want to know how things work. However, there can come a point where you spend far too much time going down irrelevant rabbit holes. If you want to make a living in any field, it is my opinion that you are better off not being an expert, but instead having a range of skills, being comb-shaped, as they call it. For example, if you want to be a software developer, you're, you're better off having very solid foundation knowledge, knowing about algorithms, knowing about how computers work, knowing about how networks work, what is the freeway handshake, why did they design it that way? What is the difference between TCP and UDP? Things that are pretty foundational, especially if you want to work with the internet, you probably, you probably know the difference between those two. And if you're curious what it is, TCP is basically, is transmission control protocol, and it basically just, it's a slower way to send and receive information, but it's, uh, it's, a lot more sa it's a lot more safe. It does a bunch of checks to make sure that the uh, the files have been transferred correctly. And it's something that you would use if you download something. Whereas UDP is used for streaming. UDP does not, is, does not concern itself with where the data has been received. It just sends data. And in situations where that's not a big deal, it's a fantastic tool. Streaming, like if you're watching this on Twitch, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably using UDP. Because if it drops... If you, if you drop a single, actually maybe not on YouTube, but definitely on Twitch, definitely on live streams, definitely on Spotify, because if you, if you lose a frame from a live stream, it's really not that big a deal. 
and UDP is just a much better way of doing this. Now the internet connections have become more stable. People are questioning whether we need TCP to begin with. That's a whole different, that's a whole different topic there. You see, it's information like this, it's stuff like this that will make you a better engineer. Like, knowing this, just what I just said, the difference between UDP and TCP is far more valuable than knowing seven different frameworks poorly so that you can put them on your CV. Oh, I know, I know React, I know, I know Vue.js, I know all these things. That doesn't really do anything for you. Like, the, the person that you're applying to, they know. They probably don't know seven different frameworks that well because you're not using them every single day, right? You build a project off a course from Udemy and now you know React. You're far better off <clears throat> knowing a bunch of fundamentals really well and understanding them. And then you can just learn stuff on top of that because once you have the fundamentals, learning things becomes easy. If you try to learn operating systems and how they're designed right now without a, fun, without a foundation, you're going to have to memorize a bunch of stuff. However, if you have a deeper understanding of how, how operating systems work, the knowledge just becomes logical because it is logical. Some of it is convention, but even with convention, there's a, there's a reason why the convention exists. And if you know why the convention exists, or what environment forced them to make that decision, <clears throat> then the choice becomes logical. Oh, of course, that's why they named it that, of course. This applies to everything, not just software development. If you want to be successful, especially if you want to make a living at something, being autistically really bo borrowed down into one lane is going to get you in trouble. Because in reality, you need a few more skills than that. And here's the thing, if you want to become 100% proficient at something, the amount of time and effort between 90% and 100% is not the same as the amount of effort between 0% and 10%. The higher up you climb, the more difficult it is to achieve that level. Think of World of Warcraft or any RPG you want, right? Reaching, going from level 1 to level 2 is a lot easier than going from level 59 to level 60 or whatever level cap World of Warcraft has now. And that, that imitates life. That's, that's true, that's real. So you don't have to be 100% at something. You can have a main core skill, but comb-shaped means you have a core skill and then a bunch of smaller skills attached to it. But like you, don't, you don't have to be a complete master at something to do it well. You can spend the time, like, in my opinion, it is better to be 60% at a bunch of different skills than to be 100% on one skill. Because getting to 60% on, like, seven skills is roughly the same amount of time as getting to 90% on one skill. And that one skill that you have, it may become automated. It may become irrelevant. People might just not care about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're really good at... I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you're really good at carving stuff out of wood. That's cool. That's cool. You could put that on your Tinder profile. But whether that gets you hired or not, or whether that allows you to sustain yourself, is debatable. You could do it with social media, but then that involves a bunch of other skills, right? If you want to make it on social media, you have to be interesting, you have to be magnetic, you have to speak well, you have to, to have something about you that draws people in. Simply carving stuff isn't sufficient. Sim simply knowing how to carve stuff out of wood isn't sufficient. You have to have a bunch of other affluent skills. And that will make you comb-shaped, right? Like if you're really good at carving stuff out of wood and you make a YouTube channel, you have to have secondary skills. You have to know how to operate a camera or a phone. You have to know good angles. You have to think about changing angles throughout the video. You have to think about lighting. You have to think about <clears throat> the video editing, how this video will come across. You have to think of a bunch of different things. And all your, your core skill is wood carving. Then you have a bunch of Afrin skills, such as editing and filming and all that kind of stuff. I hope my 
ramblings have made sense. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.